Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Seattle Area Independent Schools Virtual College Fair. We are really excited to have you participate in this event. We've got some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Andy, and I will be your facilitator. But before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You are able to use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Now this presentation is being recorded and that recording will be available at strivescan.com slash SAIS. And now I'd like to turn things over to Scotty from SAIS just for a little introduction. Thank you for that. Welcome here. My name is Scotty Hill. I'm the Director of College Counseling for the Annie Wright School for Girls uh, in Tacoma, Washington, and in partnership with all the other Seattle area independent schools. Thank you for coming. This is the second year we have done this fair virtually. I think we're getting the hang of it. Uh, so we appreciate that you're taking some time to learn about colleges for our juniors. This is the start of a very exciting time for our seniors. This sort of marks the very beginning of that real application process. So I wish you all the best. It's nice to see some familiar names in that uh, attendee list, but I'm gonna turn it back over to Strivestan and all of the experts that we have for you here today. Enjoy. Thank you so much. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our first school, which is Northwestern University. Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Let me pull up my slideshow and then we'll dive right in. All right, I will trust that my colleagues will uh, chat me if that doesn't look right to any of you. Um, again, good. welcome. Thrilled to have you all here today. My name is Valerie Smith. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a senior assistant director of admission at Northwestern University. Um, and I'm excited to share a little bit more with you about our community of 8,000 undergraduate students located in Evanston, Illinois, just north of the city of Chicago. So let's dive right in. Um, one of the first things you should know about Northwestern is that we have a really vibrant traditional campus located right next door to Chicago. So students are drawn to Northwestern because they can come and make a home in our tightly knit student community and also take advantage of having nine and a half million neighbors to the south. Our students utilize the city of Chicago for all sorts of reasons, not only dining and culture and entertainment, but career preparation jobs, internships, and other experiential learning opportunities that supplement what they're doing in the classroom. And that combination of classroom learning and then skills-based experiences that are helping to prepare you for the next step is really what Northwestern is all about academically. Let's talk a little bit about what the academic environment looks like at Northwestern. I think we're known as a private research university. That is true. As a research university, it is central to our mission that students here are able to contribute in meaningful ways to their field of study. That is true for our undergraduates. We have extensive research and specialization options for you. We are also, however, at our core, a liberal arts college. And what I mean by that is that we really value your ability to come to Northwestern, explore a really wide range of academic interests, make connections between different academic programs, and learn how to learn in a variety of different contexts. A liberal arts environment means that you are combining knowledge from across the university and you're learning skills that transcend just one major or program. Communication skills, project management skills, all sorts of other opportunities to make connections and develop skills that will benefit you after you graduate. The liberal arts experience for us also means that we value the ability to keep the academic experience small. So while our students come from all over the world, we have all 50 states and more than 95 countries represented on campus, the classroom experience is pretty small. We have a six to one student to faculty ratio and about 80% of our classes have fewer than 20 students in them. The reason that we do that is so you become a teacher just as you are a student. You are going to introduce your peers to new ideas based on your background and experiences, and you're going to receive the same from them. It's a transformational learning environment where our students get to work closely together in collaborative ways. You're seeing an introduction to our quarter system on the screen here. That's our academic calendar, and that's what makes Northwestern um, makes it possible for Northwestern to offer you as much academic flexibility as I'm describing. So students take 12 classes a year here across three academic terms. 
The fourth quarter is the summer, which is yours to take to do research or an internship or to return home, whatever you might like. But during the academic year, you're moving through three sets of classes in a way that allows you to bounce between all sorts of different programs and experiences. We organize all of those programs and majors across six undergraduate schools. So in the center of the screen is our largest school, our traditional College of Arts and Sciences. And then we have five schools with a more specific or nuanced focus that surround it. Education and social policy, journalism, engineering, communication, and music. What's unique at Northwestern about these schools is that they don't exist as silos. You'll have a home base in at least one of them, and you'll also have the flexibility to mix and match, to take classes in other schools, to pursue second majors or minors. About 77% of students at Northwestern are pursuing more than one area of study. So we are at our core, a really interdisciplinary place. It's hard to find two students here who are taking the exact same set of classes. And that academic diversity makes it a pretty fun place to be. And I mentioned at the beginning here that experiential learning opportunities in Chicago and beyond are a really core part of the experience as well. We want you to gain a lot from the classroom. We also want you to gain a lot from these experiences outside of the classroom. So whether that is undergraduate research, whether that's a study abroad experience, an internship, or an opportunity to work on one of our campus innovation centers like the Garage, our Center for Entrepreneurship, you're gonna find that these experiences are not afterthoughts. They're not limited to just a handful of students in each department. These are central and available and accessible because we're devoting the resources and the support to help you navigate them. And then I know I'm going quickly, but I want to give you a broad overview as an introduction today and encourage you to ask follow-up questions later. What I'm describing is designed so that you can come to Northwestern having no idea what you want to do or having a very clear plan or anything in between and know that you'll be supported through a team of academic advisors, peers, and faculty to help you reach your goals for after graduation. And as you can see here on the screen, it tends to work well for our students. We are happy with our postgraduate outcomes. They are leaving Northwestern and not just getting a job, but they are doing meaningful work based on what they invested in here. And then in my last uh, couple seconds here, my favorite part about Northwestern is that you can be who you are and you can do what you love. This is not a place where students have to fit into a box socially. There are lots of ways to be involved, both on a large scale, Big Ten athletics, school spirit that unites the community, and on a small scale through student organizations and other opportunities for students to bond. Briefly, our financial aid policies are designed to make this an accessible experience for students. We have a need-based financial aid policy. We meet 100% of demonstrated need through a loan-free financial aid policy. And if those terms are piquing your interest or you want to learn more, please feel free to stay in touch with me either through the Q&A today or through our social media channels. Our YouTube page in particular is especially helpful for diving more in depth into the student experience. And with that, let me stop my share here, and I believe I will pass things on to my colleague at California Lutheran. Yes, thanks to Northwestern, and correct, uh, California Lutheran University is up next. Wonderful. Thank you both so much. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Diana Hernandez. I am your admission counselor at California Lutheran University, located down in Thousand Oaks, California. My pronouns are she, her, ella. And like I mentioned, I am going to be your admission counselor. So if you decide to apply for admission, I'm going to be the one that's reviewing your application, kind of going through the whole process with you. And so at the end, I will be posting my contact information. Please go ahead and keep in touch. Let me know how I can help. And I'm happy to be with you all today. I'd like to start off just by sharing a little bit about Cal Lutheran by the numbers. So we have just under 3,000 undergraduate students with an average class size of 17 in the 14 to 1 faculty to student ratio. I do like to share with students, if you don't want professors to know your name, chances are we may not be for you, even in the classes that tend to be a little bit larger, like intro to psychology, which is one that I took. We had about 30 students in the class. Professors took the time to get to know us. They asked us some questions. They wanted to know what we were interested in doing, why we were interested in psychology, so on and so forth. And so this is something that you would definitely get on our campus. Professors wanting to be part of your academic journey, your professional journey as well, is that's so important. Helping you get those internships, those jobs, trying to figure out what comes next after graduation at Cal Lutheran. 
Something else that's important to know is our middle name is Lutheran. And so what does that mean for us as an institution? You'll see here, we have 41 different faiths represented on our campus. We feel like religion is a get to, not a have to. So you get the opportunity to continue to explore your faith, learn about others if you want it, but it's something that's not forced upon any of our students. We do have faculty and staff from various religious identities or worldviews, but we also have students, faculty and staff that have no religious affiliation or spiritual identity, and that is completely okay. We still love Cal Lutheran just the same. It really is gonna be what you make of it. Something else that's important for you all to know is Cal Lutheran is a minority majority school, meaning majority of our students do identify as coming from traditionally underrepresented backgrounds. And Cal Lutheran is proud to be a Hispanic serving institution since 2016. So at its very basic 101 level, it means that at least 25% of our students identify as being Latinx or Hispanic, but also the Department of Education asks us to look at these students that come from traditionally underrepresented backgrounds and make sure that we are also supporting them as they are on our campus through their academic journey and beyond. And so when we look at those that come from traditionally underrepresented backgrounds, it also encompasses our Black students, our Indigenous students, our students that are part of the LGBTQIA community, women in STEM, first generation college student, more than just our Latinx students. And then of course we have the students that have various identities. And so that intersectionality is also super important and something we wanna see on our campus. So we have 41 majors, 43 minors. You are able to minor in any one of our majors and then some. You'll see here we have some of our popular majors, but something that's really important for you all to know is we have no impacted majors. So you have the opportunity to double major, major in a minor, major in emphasis in a minor, really combine the different areas how you see fit and combine these different areas of studies that you may have. We also have a four to finish program where we guarantee your graduation in four years. So if the last semester, the last class that you need is full, or it's no longer being offered or anything along those lines, then we would pay for that extra semester for you to finish your degree. My favorite part about this program is that it does include a double major. So you will have the opportunity to double major, as I was mentioning before, and we will still graduate your graduate, I'm sorry, guarantee your graduation in four years. For students that are interested in teaching or is getting their MBA, their business administration master's, then that is something that you can also do on our campus through our four plus one program where you can come to campus, get your bachelor's and your MBA or your credentials in five years. Of course, living on campus, it's important for all of you. So we do have some of the nicest residence halls in California. We are ranked number 12. There is no communal restroom that you go down the hall and share with everyone on your floor. They're all what we call a suite layout. So you would be sharing your most immediate space with one other student and then the living room bathroom area with three other students as well. In order to apply, we are Common App exclusive. That is the only way to submit your application. We'll also require your official high school transcripts and an academic letter of recommendation. Cal Lutheran is purely test optional. And so if you have those test scores and you wanna send them over, that is great. I'm happy to look at them. If you don't have them, totally great, totally fine. Your application will still be considered the same. We have two admission deadlines. The first is November 1st, early action. And the second is January 1st, regular decision. Now, either of these deadlines, you will automatically be considered for academic scholarships that go up to $25,000. We also have a presidential scholarship that goes up to full tuition. If you would like to be considered for this scholarship, then it is important that you apply by our early action deadline. We also have visual performing arts scholarships that go up to full tuition. Applications should be launching soon. There is a separate application and audition or portfolio submission process that you need to keep an eye out for, um, but let me know if you have any questions. And then we also have our public price promise. So if any of the UC schools are on your list currently, if they admit you for the same term that we admit you for their undergraduate program, then we would match their um, cost of attendance, the average cost of attendance of the UCs via an academic scholarship as if you were an in-state resident here in California. And so I know it's a little bit tricky, but essentially that scholarship amount is a little bit over $28,000. It would take place of any academic scholarship that may have been awarded to you I'm happy to work out those logistics with you all um, if you definitely are interested and have any questions. So this is the contact information for our general admissions line. Feel free to reach out. Like I said in the chat, I'll also be putting my direct contact information. So feel free to reach out as well. And once again, thank you all for being with us today. Great. Thanks to California Lutheran University. And next up, we have McDaniel College.
All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's so great to be here today. My name is Chad Kuntz. I'm an admissions counselor at McDaniel College. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and his. Um, I'm really excited today to talk to you about our college. We're a very small school located in Westminster, Maryland. We have just under uh, 1,800 students. Um, but to highlight McDaniel College a little bit, three things that I know all students get out of our education at the college. There's our skills that you learn through academia, the tools that you get through career readiness programs, and of course, opportunities that the campus provides that our students take advantage of. Uh, so I'm gonna jump right in to talk about how exactly we do that. Um, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is our McDaniel commitment. That's our plan, how we do that to prepare students uh, before they get to us, to prepare them during their time at the college, and of course, preparing them for what comes next. Uh, so the first part of our McDaniel commitment is known as My Place. My Place is basically, it's known as McDaniel Local is what we call it, but all students before their first year, they're going to participate in a pre-orientation, a two-day pre-orientation program in the summer. Basically, you're going to live on campus. You're going to get that feeling of what it's like to be away from your family and live on a college campus. You're going to get to explore campus. You're going to get to explore our community in Westminster, Maryland, connected right around our college, as well as get to meet with the academic advisor and get your first semester worth of courses. So hopefully by the end of that time, you're going to feel very comfortable with uh, the transition into the college world. The next piece that I wanted to mention is known as my design. What my design is basically is building that blueprint for your college years. So all first year students after your first semester and then uh, after Christmas and after New Year's, all students participate in what's known as a Jan term. Basically what a Jan term is, is basically the students will move back to campus for this three week course and during this three-week course, our students are going to reflect back on their first semester. And what did that look like? What are some things that went really well? What are some things that you want to improve on? Or what are some courses you might be interested in taking in the future? Um, also, during that time, you're going to be taking a variety of assessments to learn what some of your skills are and what some of your strengths are and what uh, possible career fields you might be interested in studying. The great thing about McDaniel College is you do not have to declare a major to the end of your sophomore year. So the word exploration gets thrown around a lot at our college. And that's what I like to share with the families that, and the families and students that are listening here today. Also during this Jan term, you're gonna get to work with our uh, Center for Experience and Opportunities office, and you're gonna start building that resume. You're gonna get an outline of what it looks like to get it formatted right. So you can fill it in with all those opportunities that you take advantage of during your time at the college as well as different opportunities to go on different trips to uh, shadow different jobs, whether that's you're interested in science or education or business. And really it's just about getting a taste of what the professional world is gonna look like. Um, before I continue with the McDaniel commitment, I'm gonna briefly talk about our McDaniel plan. And basically our McDaniel plan talks a little bit about our curriculum. So what's different, all colleges, of course, we have core classes that all students have to take. But what's special about McDaniel is that it's a more customizable process, right? Because we understand that one, uh, one size doesn't fit all, right, in the college process. So with our core classes that you have to take, students can pick courses that interest them to fill those requirements. So an example I always like to use is the first year seminar. So it is what you think it is when you hear first year seminar. It is intro to college, college expectations, how to write a college paper. But really, you get to choose what courses interest you to take that course. So I met a student on move-in day a few weeks ago. He's a physics major, and he's actually taking a course about uh, math and puzzles because, again, it kind of ties into what he's thinking. Um, if you're interested in the theatrical arts, you could take a course about that. If you're interested in ethics and policies and philosophy, you can take courses about that. So the whole point is to make this uh, these core requirements more interactive and more engaging for you learning and making it uh, the idea, again, of exploration uh, more accessible to you, the student. Um, here are some more examples of the core classes that we offer here and the types of courses that you could take as well. But now jumping back into our McDaniel commitment, we're going to start with the next piece, which is my experience. Uh, so basically, McDaniel College, we guarantee two experiential learning opportunities, whether that's studying abroad, right? We have agreements in over 50 different countries to study abroad. Uh, it's always good. To, I always recommend studying abroad. You get the chance because you really get that global perspective and it's really, really awesome. Uh, as well as uh, another type of experience or experiential learning opportunity could be internships of some kind, research of some kind, or, or getting a part-time job on or off campus. That all counts as the experiential learning opportunity. And these opportunities are what you're going to use to fill that resume that you started creating during that Jan term. So that's the my experience piece. Moving on to the my career portion of the McDaniel commitment. 
basically the my career portion is a course that you take towards the end of your time at McDaniel College where you work with our Center for Experience and Opportunities office again to finish that resume, to maybe learn how to write a cover letter and do some mock interviews and get those professionalism tips so that uh, you're ready to go with those tools, as I mentioned before, those tools when you're in the professional world. As well as during that time, we're going to make sure sit down with you, make sure you have a plan, a plan to make sure that do you want a job before you graduate? Are you planning to start that job search process after you graduate? Or do you want to continue on in graduate studies, right? So uh, it's always best to make sure they sit down and have that plan. And that's what we try to ensure that the students are prepared for the professional world. Um, if you start the job search process post-graduation, you're not having any luck. We do have strong alumni connections where you can always come back and it's always, um, we always welcome students back and we'll be happy to help you with that as well. Um, quickly to wrap up our application process, we're on the Common App or you can apply on the McDaniel website. We do have a, we do require a personal essay. Some students stress out about it, but just know that uh, you're writing about yourself and the experiences that you've had. So that's why we're really excited and encouraging that you put a lot of effort into your essay and we're happy to read them. Um, we also require official high school transcript. We highly recommend at least one letter of recommendation. We are a test optional school. So if you'd like to submit your test scores, you can, but you do not have to. We have holistic review process where we wanna see how well-rounded you are as a student. Um, and then some of our deadlines are listed there below. The one we normally recommend is the early action deadline because it's a non-binding agreement, which means you don't have to let us know your decision if you'd like to attend the college until the national decision day of May 1st. So uh, here's some of my contact information. If you have any additional questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A below and I'll be happy to answer, or you can shoot me an email or give me a call and I'd be happy to help. But until then, uh, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. All right, thank you to McDaniel College. Next up, we have Lewis and Clark College. Great, thanks, Andy. Give me one second to share my screen, everyone. Excellent, perfect. Well, thank you for joining me today. Um, my name is Alice Flood and I use she, her pronouns and I am an admissions counselor here at Lewis and Clark College. Um, I am so excited to work with all of our students from Washington State. And I myself am a graduate of a Seattle area independent school. So I am even more excited to be here with you all. Um, so let's get into it. Lewis and Clark is a private institution with a public conscience, a residential campus with a global reach. Um, students and faculty pursue new ways of knowing, combining classic liberal arts learning with pioneering collaboration. Our students represent the next generation of global thinkers and leaders, unafraid to discard conventional thinking, civic complacency, and outmoded preconceptions. You'll be inspired by the beauty of our natural setting on 137 wooded acres and Portland, Oregon, our commitment to interdisciplinary, experiential, and rigorous academics, and the staggering percentage of our students who take part in one of our renowned study abroad programs. Lewis and Clark is where agile minds come to learn, to explore, and to work together. All of our classes here are taught by professors, not graduate assistants. One of the first words I always use to describe Lewis and Clark's academics is engaged. Students and faculty are committed to learning together in a collaborative environment, in small classes where students are actively engaged in their learning. And how do Lewis and Clark's professors describe our students? The word I hear most often is curious. They want to know more, to make connections across disciplines, to tackle issues with creativity and insight, and ultimately to make the world and how does this liberal arts education prepare you for success after graduation? No matter whether students choose to major or minor in biology or international affairs or psychology or entrepreneurship, they are learning strong communication and quantitative skills. They're collaborating, they're exercising their creativity and they're becoming critical thinkers and problem solvers. And these are exactly the skills that employers are looking for. Lewis and Clark students hail from all over the country and all over the world. Um, Washington is always very well represented within our student body. Our students come together and share an incredibly diverse array of perspectives and backgrounds. That's important to us. Um, it's also important to know that Lewis and Clark is an amazingly welcoming and supportive place where you can really be you. 
We're lucky to be located here in the green, quirky, wonderful city of Portland. Many of our students and alumni describe it as the best of both worlds. We have a beautiful forested residential campus in a quiet neighborhood next to a massive state park. But just six miles away is downtown Portland and all it has to offer. And why is that important? Well, concerts, events, great food, and a vibrant art scene. But it also means students have ready access to internships and career opportunities. Over half of our students engage in an internship at some point during their four years at LC. And it's so easy to get around with our free shuttle, great public transportation, biking, zip cars, and more. Our students also have incredible access to op outdoor opportunities. And this is something I make sure to share with my students from Washington. Right next door to our campus, we have Tryon Creek State Park, one of my personal favorite places to go hiking or running while I'm on campus. And our renowned College Outdoors program provides all sorts of countless opportunities to explore and learn about the amazing environment of the Pacific Northwest. We absolutely take advantage of our close proximity to the Columbia River Gorge, Mount Hood, and the beautiful Oregon coast. One of the most unique aspects of Lewis and Clark is that we have embraced a global perspective to an extent that you rarely see among colleges in the United States. So many LNC alumni reflect on their study abroad experiences and describe them as transformative. Study abroad can impact your academic direction, your career focus, and you learn so much about the world and yourself by immersing yourself in a different culture for a semester or even a whole year. If you haven't seriously considered studying abroad where you, while you are in college, no matter where you go, I would encourage you to do so. So are you thinking about applying to Lewis and Clark? Here are three important things to remember. Number one, our November 1st deadline for both non-binding early action and binding early decision is coming up soon. So get that Common App wrapped up. That's what we use and it is free to apply to LNC through the Common App. Number two, Lewis and Clark has been test optional since 1991. We are still test optional. That means you do not need to submit SAT or ACT scores, period. Admissions, number three, um, admissions interviews are recommended for seniors who are planning to apply. Um, you can sign up now for a virtual interview or a virtual visit, and we are still offering on-campus visits in limited numbers right now, and you must make a reservation. If you have any questions about affording a private education, we can help. Over 90% of our students receive financial aid. All students are automatically considered for our generous merit aid scholarships that range from 15,000 per year up to full tuition. And to be considered for need-based aid, you just have to file the FAFSA. I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to work with you all as you explore and apply to Lewis and Clark. Thank you so much for your time today. All right, thank you to Lewis and Clark College. Next up, we've got Rochester Institute of Technology. Just want to get my clock going here. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for sticking around for the, through all six presentations. I know we lost a few people, I think, after Northwestern ended, but most of you have stuck around, and thank you for that. Um, my name is Mark Emblidge. I'm Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Rochester Institute of Technology, better known as RIT. Um, RIT is located in a suburban setting about six miles south of downtown Rochester, which is in upstate New York. Uh, we are one of the largest private universities in the country with more than 16,600 students on campus, the vast majority of which are undergraduate. Uh, we have a large international population as well as uh, Alana pop population, African American, Latin American, and Native American. But we also have another form of diversity you won't find a lot of places. Uh, we have close to 1,000 students at RIT who are deaf or hard of hearing, and that's not random. One of our nine colleges is called NTID, the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. Our students are coming to us from all 50 states and about 90 countries, and our average class size is around 22 students. Even though we are an institute of technology, our nine colleges include both STEM-based 
and non-STEM based colleges. So you could come to us for engineering or computing or sciences, but you can also come to us for art and design, business, liberal arts, a lot of different directions you can go and you can mix things up with combined accelerated programs, majors and minors, uh, possibly even double majors, depending on what the combination is. Uh, one of the key things to know about RIT is that we're very career oriented. We want to give you a great education. I think we do, but we also want you to be prepared for what's next. And so we offer a bunch of different types of experience-based or experiential learning, but the one we're best known for is our co-op program. What's a co-op? Co-ops are internships, but they're internships that are full-time, meaning you're not trying to balance work and school. You're just working full time and they are paid professional experiences. And there's something that we've been doing at RIT for almost 110 years. As you can see here, we have more than 3,400 employment partners worldwide. And this way, when our students graduate from RIT, they've got that four year or five year degree, but they also have a resume that has anywhere from three months to a year of full time paid professional work experience on it. This slide gives you an idea of how co-op might fit into a typical four or a five-year program. With a four-year program like business, which only requires a single co-op, that's typically going to be covered over a summer. But when you get into five-year programs like engineering and computer science, you're going to have multiple co-ops. Some of them are going to be during the school year, and some of them are going to be over the summers. Regardless, when you're on co-op, you're not paying tuition. So even if you're in a five-year program, you still pay only four years of tuition, but you spread it out over five years and you're getting paid by whatever company you're working for. And that makes a big difference when you go to look for a job. We also have other forms of experiential learning. Uh, one is undergraduate research, uh, a lot of opportunities to collaborate with faculty on research that they're doing and also to explore independent research interests you might have. We also offer opportunities abroad. Obviously, those are a little bit more limited during the pandemic, but we have our own international campuses in Croatia, Kosovo, and Dubai, and we partner with two universities in China. We also have faculty-led programs, and we have study abroad opportunities that span about 55 countries. So a lot of opportunities there. There's a lot of students on at the RIT campus who are makers, the inventors, the people that want to develop apps, the people that want to make movies, the people that want to start their own businesses. So there's a lot of support for innovation and creativity and entrepreneurship on campus. And we have a lot of facilities on campus that support that. And if you like Shark Tank, we have our own version called Tiger Tank. We have more than 300 active clubs and organizations on campus putting on hundreds of events each year. If varsity sports are your thing, we are primarily a division three school. The one exception is hockey. Both men's and women's hockey are division one. I do wanna mention also our men's lacrosse team this past year won the division three national championship. They had come close a couple times in the past, but this year they finally won it all. Uh, one thing that's really growing at RIT is performing arts. While we don't offer majors in music or theater or dance, we do offer minors in several of those areas. And we also offer performing arts scholarships now as well. Our goal is to become the top desti destination in performing arts for non-majors. And so if you are a theater person or an actor or dancer, uh, there's going to be a lot of support for you there. When you apply to RIT, you can apply directly to a specific major. That's the most common path, but it's not the only one. The middle path here shows that almost every college at RIT has its own exploration program for the first year. Um, so if you think you wanna go into business, for example, but you're not sure if you want accounting or finance or international business, you could apply to our business exploration program, use that first year to explore and then declare a major. The third path is our university exploration program, and that's for a student who is undecided that their interests don't fall neatly into one college, they fall into multiple colleges at RIT. When we review your application, we're going to look at your high school academic record, your standardized test scores, letters of recommendation, the activities you're involved in, interests that you have, awards you've gotten, uh, the essay that you write. Some programs will require an art portfolio. We do also offer admissions interviews. Uh, but they are not mandatory and they're really meant to be more informational than anything else. And we do also pay attention to demonstrated interest. Uh, we are running out of time. I do wanna mention though, that we do have open houses coming up on campus and also virtually. In fact, our first wave of virtual open houses is next week. So if you think you wanna check them out virtually, 
Uh, that's a great opportunity to do that. You can go onto the admissions website and find that out. Um, I know someone asked earlier about a combined bachelor master's program that Northwestern offers. We also have one of those. The undergrad portion, portion is done at RIT, and then the, 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 the MD program is done at SUNY Upstate Medical University in Syracuse. So that's about all I have time for. Thank you very much, and go Seahawks. All right. Thank you to Rochester Institute of Technology. And that was our final presenter of today's session, but we do still have a little bit of time left. So at this point, I would like to invite all of our presenters to go ahead and uh, turn their cameras on so we can do a little bit of a Q&A here. Uh, and so the first question I'd like to ask everybody is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and start with Northwestern University again. Sure, thanks, Andy. I think my biggest piece of advice is that when you are looking at schools, Keep an open mind, just in general, about the type of school that might be a good fit for you, about the location of schools that you may not have considered before. Um, it's really an exciting opportunity to think outside the box, maybe really consider the goals that you have for yourself as a college student and as a professional, um, and think creatively about the places that are going to help you meet those goals. But the second piece of advice is to keep an open mind with each individual school as well. Don't make a decision based on one interaction with one student or even one admission counselor. Take the time to get some different perspectives, uh, different types of students, different uh, alumni, different staff members. Everybody's going to have a relatively unique experience on each different campus, and it's helpful to get as many different sides of the story, so to speak, as you can. So you really have a well-rounded understanding of whether that place is going to be a good fit for you. I worry when I hear about students who say, I took a tour and I just didn't vibe with the tour guide and so that school is off my list. It's okay if you meet a student and you say, you know what, I really want another perspective or I want another layer of understanding about the school. All of us on this call and any admission staff you work with at other universities are here to help you do that. So make sure you take advantage of your resources as you're researching. Yeah. Perfect, okay, I just didn't wanna make sure that I wasn't speaking out of turn. That's really great advice. Um, definitely echo what Valerie said. I would add is to keep in touch with your admission counselors, right? So not only if you wanna be connected with like another student or a faculty or a coach or anybody else, um, but we are here to be your biggest advocates, right? So if there's a letter of recommendation that you need to submit, but your recommender is having a hard time logging on to a common application or submitting it, like let us know, like we also get it, like we're all human, internet crashes, computers crash, like things can happen. And so by you keeping in touch with us, that way we can see how then we can serve you and support you throughout this process as well. We're really all here to be that, to be a support for you. Um, so make sure that you utilize us. Yeah, just adding on to what they've been saying. I mean, it, with the pandemic and everything, you know, virtual tours and the virtualness of everything is, it's so access, accessible for students today. But really, if you get an opportunity to try to go to your campus and like really get that feeling what it's like to be on campus, you know, and like I've had experiences personally in the past where I've walked on, I've, I attended a smaller school. So when I walk on a big campus, I kind of got the vibe. I was like, oh, this doesn't feel right for me. Just a few steps on campus. But to some, it may feel right. So if you get an opportunity to actually be there in person and get to see and experience it and go on tour and maybe try to interact with some students the best you can, it's it's it makes all the difference in your search process. Yeah, this is all great advice. I definitely want to echo what everyone else has said before. I guess the things that I would want to make sure to share is that as a student, I would just make sure to continually check in with yourself and make sure that the schools that you're applying to are actually what you're interested in. I know we're talking to y'all in mid-September and some of our deadlines start in November. That's a lot of time where there's a lot of time to change your mind and think that something else might be more interesting based on a class you took or a conversation you had. So make time to check back in with yourself and make sure you're being true to 
yourself as you discover schools. And then my next piece of advice would just be to reach out to your admissions counselor, but then some of the services on campus that you might be interested in using. Say you need some more support in the classroom, reach out to the offices of accessibility, make sure that you're gonna be able to be supported in the same way that you are in high school because you wanna be able to set yourself from up for success before you even get to campus. Yeah, I think that's all I've got for now, Mark. Thank you. Obviously, everything that's been said before me is pretty accurate. And I was probably going to mention the idea of visiting campuses. If you can, it's been tough during a pandemic, but it's important to make those connections. Uh, I will say pay attention to the deadlines that different schools have. The college search process can be overwhelming uh, on top of everything else you have to do as high school seniors. And it's easy to kind of lose track of these things, maybe keep a spreadsheet or something like that, list the different schools you're applying to, what are their deadlines, what are their requirements. If your college counselor is helping you, if your parents are helping you, make sure there's communication there so that you don't miss uh, a deadline. Like I've, over the years, I've talked to like parents where, oh, I thought my son was going to do this, or I've talked to students who said, oh, I thought my mom or dad was going to do this. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, also, uh, the, the concept of fit is very important. You know, a lot of people go right to college rankings, for example, and say, oh, these are the schools that I should apply to. Not necessarily. There's no college that is right for everyone. Um, some people want a bigger environment. Some want a smaller environment. Some want rural. Some want urban. Some want suburban. Um, it's, you know, it's what's important to you and finding the best fit. And that's not always easy to do, but I would say just don't get so caught up in rankings, for example, that, that you ignore that feeling in your heart that you get maybe when you visit a campus and say, yes, this is the place I think I'd be comfortable calling home for the next four or five years. Awesome, great advice. Uh, one more question. What's one thing that you want your students to remember about your school? And again, we'll start with Northwestern. Sure. I'd say that I want you to know that Northwestern is a place where you don't have to have anything figured out when you come here. Um, you don't have to present a 10 year plan to me in the application process. You don't have to have a tailored resume that speaks directly to your career goals. Um, we are a place designed to help students who want to come here and figure that out academically, professionally, personally. It's a place for exploration. If you know exactly what you want to do, we're gonna help you explore that from new perspectives and make unique combinations with that field. Um, but you do not need to come to us knowing exactly what the next four years or even the next four weeks of your life are gonna look like. Um, but the, the campus is incredibly supportive in the way that it works with students as they're exploring and growing and building an experience. It's a really great match for what they want to accomplish. Something for us, I think, is we're really big on community. This is definitely a space where you're going to find your people, like your friends now, or you're going to continue to stay in touch with them. I know a lot of us definitely can say the same. Um, I'm a proud Cal Lutheran alum, and that's definitely true for me and all of my friends. And so know that this is a welcoming space. We welcome students from all walks of life. We want that on our campus. We recognize that's what makes us strong, um, not just as a university, but definitely and just as a place of living. Um, and so know that we, you, you will be welcome here and you, we are excited to welcome you into the community. At McDaniel College, I mentioned it throughout the presentation, but the idea of exploration is really the key component of McDaniel College's uh, curriculum and just getting students interested in just trying new things and getting involved in different clubs and getting involved in internships and study abroad and just really just finding what interests you and just exploring those options that you have. That's really the key to McDaniel College and the success of the students that we have here is that they took some chances with their academics and the clubs that they're interested in. And uh, I think in the end, it really helps them find what they're truly passionate about. And they really are able to change lives when they graduate from the college. For our IT, I'm gonna squeak two things in here. One is, uh, reiterating about the co-op program that we offer and the different forms of experiential learning. Co-op is not unique to RIT. There are other co-op schools out there, but very few have been doing it as long as we have or as extensively as we do. And I mentioned that some of our programs are five-year programs because of the amount of co-op we require. But um, if, if you, and if, 
If it's a race for you to get in and out of college as quickly as possible, and you're thinking about engineering or computer science, you might say, why would I go to RIT when I can go somewhere else and get the same degree in four years? Um, and that's a valid question. You've got to decide what your priorities are. But the students who choose a co-op school like RIT are saying, okay, it's going to take me a little bit longer to get this degree, but look at the look at the experience I'm going to have, look at the exposure I'm going to have to my career while I'm still in college. Hopefully those co-ops help you confirm you chose the right major. Um, so there's, there's, there's a lot of advantages to co-op. And if you can look past the fact that depending on your major, it might take you a year longer, there's, there's a lot of value in that. And I also wanna emphasize again, that we're not just a STEM institution. We have great programs in art and design, liberal arts, business, a lot of directions you can go and you can design your own major as well. Thank you. Last but not least, at Lewis and Clark, we really strive to create a community where students can show up to campus, be themselves, and be supported, whether that be inside the classroom, outside of the classroom, as they engage with the broader Portland community. Um, the moment I've arrived on campus, the word just community keeps popping up just as why students love being at Lewis and Clark, love studying in the forest, being on outdoor trips, studying abroad with one another, um, and being uh, in community with one another. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing those uh, insights into your schools and for, for joining us today and presenting. Um, we are actually out of time, though, so I also want to say thanks to all of you for joining us today. Uh, now, when you close this window, there is going to be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Um, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash SAIS. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day, everybody.